the tomb that once held the body of Jesus is still empty. I just want us to stop and take that in for a moment. You may think I'm stating the obvious, and yet this can be said of no other grave. Jesus is risen. Jesus lives still today. Yes, we celebrated last Sunday, Easter Sunday, with such great joy. But our celebration is not over because Jesus is still risen. And we use that uh, present tense, Jesus is risen. And I think in the Sundays, in the days after Easter Sunday, We need to challenge ourselves to live the fullness of our Easter faith. The resurrection of Jesus Christ brings new life to us. We are resurrection people. N.T. Wright is an Anglican bishop, and he's a professor of New Testament. I think it's nice that he uses his initials N.T. He teaches New Testament. The T stands for Thomas. You'll get why that's, you know, related to the scripture reading. But anyway, he's a well-respected scholar, and he talks about our task of living in the world today as followers of Jesus Christ. We are to live as resurrection people in between Easter and the final day, right? And we live with these two uh, points one behind us and one in front of us, as both individuals and as a faith community. Our worship and our mission need to show that we are a sign of our identity as Easter people. We point to that. But we are also to live so that we give a foretaste of what life will be like when God's kingdom is realized in all its fullness. So we live in between these two guiding points in history. We must live as if the resurrection of Jesus Christ makes all the difference to us. This is our focus for the season of Easter. New life begins now. We don't have to wait for anything. Sometimes we feel like we have to wait for something else to occur, but right here and right now, we live as Easter people. Jesus already has secured our victory. We can begin our new life in the power of his resurrection right now. Now, if you know me at all, you know that I love butterflies. I'm a little concerned that my butterfly has now gone (laughs) with Ruby, but it's okay. A few weeks ago, I got a call from um, Betty Zangle, who's now in assisted living. And she was talking with some of her friends there, and they wanted to know about where they could go to see butterflies. And she said, I know just the person to call. And she called me. She knew that I would be able to supply her with information about butterflies. She's very observant um, and had noticed that I had worn butterfly earrings and carried a bag with butterflies on it. Because to me, butterflies are such a powerful symbol of the transformation of our new life in Jesus Christ. And I think sometimes we forget that butterflies aren't just born that way. They have to undergo, as caterpillars, this arduous process to become what they are. The butterfly is beautiful only because the caterpillar was brave. Likewise, for us to live as resurrection people, we must undergo a process which will require courage. It will also require endurance and faith in the one who makes all things new. 
And I believe that we need to be patient with ourselves as God continues to transform us and make us new. We will continue to evolve and change in order to become all that God wants us to be. This is certainly true for us as individuals. But I also want to remind us that it is true for us as a congregation. And if we think about the church universal, we continue to evolve and become, by God's grace, all that God wants us to be. We have a theme verse for our sermon series, and it's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And it's, as um, uh, Bernie has already said, it's taken from the Common English Bible, and it's worded a little differently. It says it like this, If anyone is in Christ, that person is part of the new creation. I like this wording because it places our individual process of transformation within the larger context of God's entire new creation. Yes, we do individually change, but we are also part of this new creation that God has made while we are still personally being transformed. I could ask you if you feel any different after last Sunday, or is anything different in the way that you're acting after our celebration of Christ's resurrection. Our life is different because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and by faith we need to embrace all that God is doing to make us new. But how is it that we live as Easter people? What is qualitatively different about our lives? My design of this sermon series is to help us explore some of these differences in our life as a result of Christ's resurrection. New life begins now. Living with courage. It does take courage to live the new life of Christ's resurrection. I think sometimes we approach this from the negative, thinking, what must we overcome to live as part of the new creation? There are challenges for us. And our scripture lesson today gives us an inside look into the struggles the first disciples of Jesus had in living the joy of his resurrection. Our scripture lesson from the Gospel of John begins on the evening of the first day of the week. It was just earlier on that same day that these disciples had heard that Jesus' body is not in the tomb. And they are given this good news that Jesus is alive. But they haven't seen him yet. Think about how these disciples are described. Scripture tells us that they are afraid. They are afraid that the authorities would do to them what they had done to Jesus. They are afraid for their very lives. You see, at this point, they don't understand what has happened to Jesus. They couldn't comprehend the reality that he is alive. Remember, he told them several times that he would die and on the third day rise again. But they couldn't put all of this together. So what do they do? They get together as a group and they huddle and they lock all the doors. They're in a locked room. And suddenly, Jesus appears to them. He comes right in, he's right there in the room. 
And he greets them by saying, peace be with you. And then he shows them his hands and his side, the places of his wounds. And when they see that, they see that it is their Lord. And they are filled with joy. And so Jesus greets them again, and he says the same thing, peace be with you. And with this blessing, he is sending them into the world. Here, we learn that Jesus breathes on them as his way of giving them his spirit. And with his spirit, he gives them the power to forgive. Forgiveness is the beginning of our new life, isn't it? But with all of this, it seems to me that Jesus is giving them the courage they need to do the work that he is sending them to do. Now, Thomas is not with them when all of this happens. You have to forgive me, I'm a little curious here. Where is Thomas? What possibly could have been more important than being with the disciples on this day? We don't, we don't know. But the next time they see Thomas, they tell him what has happened. And he hears this report of Jesus' appearance. And he proclaims that he needs to see and to touch the wounds of Jesus for himself. And eight days later, Thomas gets his opportunity. And we heard how he responds now, a lot of us have been pretty tough on Thomas through the years. But I think that if we're honest with ourselves, we're a little bit more like Thomas than we would like to admit. Personally, I really love this part of the story because it allows us to see really the humanness of Jesus' disciples. And in this story, there's room for all of us wherever we are in embracing our faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus blesses Thomas as he did the other disciples. And he offers blessings for us as well, for all those who believe without seeing. Faith requires courage. In order for us to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we need to have courage. But it takes even more courage to live as Easter people, to live the truth and the power of Christ's resurrection. Perhaps we could think for a moment about people who show courage in living as Easter people. We might think about those who must overcome a great deal in order to embrace new life. As I thought about different people that I've either known or read about, I was reminded of some of the young people that I worked with at Board of Child Care. And then I saw this picture in the daily prayer guide. This is a drawing by a teen who is a part of a ministry much like BCC called Kids Above All, located in Chicago. And I think it's the combination of the cross and the butterfly and see the antenna of the butterfly kind of come out of the cross and the flowers on the side. It really shows the possibility of new life in resurrection. You can only imagine the life experience of that young person who drew this amazing symbol of life in Christ. But Whatever our life story and whoever we are, it requires courage for us to embrace the new life Jesus Christ is offering us as individuals. 
and as a congregation. And I am grateful that Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, gives us the courage that we need. We will hear several what we call uh, post-resurrection appearances of Jesus with his disciples and beloved followers. And in each one, Jesus gives the courage that is needed. So I want us to think about the last verse in the scripture passage. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. Life. A different quality of life. It is God's deepest desire that we have the life that Jesus' resurrection makes possible. We have the courage to ask for this gift and to live it to its fullest. But as we think of ourselves, honestly, how much are we like those first disciples of Jesus? Perhaps afraid, shut up by ourselves in our buildings, We do not realize that the power of the risen Jesus is in us. And it is with us. We have this power to use as God calls us. We can breathe in the blessing of our living Lord. Peace, forgiveness, joy, and all the gifts of the Spirit, are ours. God gives us the courage to believe and to live the good news. And God also gives us the courage to share this good news with others. We cannot keep it to ourselves. We must take the good news and our identity as Easter people everywhere we go. Jesus himself sends us beyond our walls and beyond ourselves to give ourselves in loving service. This past week, I took some time uh, to go to Ledoux Gardens. I I ran to some people from the church. But what was interesting is I had a conversation with a woman um, there And we began to talk about faith. And she felt that um, that conversation was something that God was preparing her for. Like She was looking for a sign to encourage her in her faith. And for whatever reason, I felt courageous enough to share with this woman. And I just wonder how many of those opportunities do we miss because we don't think about it or we're feeling afraid or we don't want to be pushy. But as we open ourselves and allow God to use us, we can talk about Easter and what it means to us, to our faith. We testify to the faith that is described in the book of 1 Peter. We believe in God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose mercy we are given new birth into a living hope through Christ's resurrection from the dead. My friends, let us use the courage Christ's resurrection gives to us to live as people with vibrant Easter faith. Amen.